Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So today I'm going to be going over the trees in my garden uh, because I have added a lot. So we only had a few of the spruces up front that I'll show you but I won't talk a whole lot about because I don't know the specific variety types. I think they're just a common blue spruce and green spruce. Uh, and then there's a tree out front known as a Bradford pear which I will also not be talking about. That tree was planted in 2005-2006 when the home was built. Uh, it was kind of a special, I guess, with the homes that this particular builder was putting in our neighborhood. Everyone got a Bradford pear out front. Now, Bradford pears should not be planted. Good garden centers shouldn't be selling them. Uh, they're pretty much known as trash trees these days. They're beautiful in spring, uh, but you should not be planting one because they're extremely invasive and they readily set seed and just take over native trees. And so I'm not going to be covering it very much. Just know that if you have one, consider removing it. One day when some of our other trees get larger, uh, I intend on removing that tree. Our neighbors have already lost several of theirs. They have really terrible branch structures. And if you have high winds and don't typically have an arborist out and get those cleaned up uh, every few years, they will just get so thick and catch so much wind that the branches break. But we're gonna walk around the front right quick and I'm gonna show you a couple of the trees uh, that I really love out there. These are in no particular order. I have a lot of trees that I've planted that will get larger and I also have a lot of specimen type trees and I'll try and go over all of them to the extent I can remember them. Some of them are tucked in here and there, but let's get started. So this is the Bradford pear. It's really large right now and we did come a few years ago and have an arborist come in and clean it up because when it storms really bad, wind kind of blows around the house, uh, this way and kind of whips it around pretty bad and our neighbor actually had his split twice and he finally cut it down last year but the other trees are just this green spruce right here uh, it was planted of course by the people who built the home uh, general rule of thumb is people who are building homes do not tend to do a very good job of placement of trees. And this is actually probably way too close to the house. And we'll also probably have to come out someday, but for right now it's okay. I'm trying to keep it limbed up off the house. This one is placed a little further back and more appropriately placed than the blue spruce over there. Um, but you know, it is what it is. At this point, I'm not removing it. It's still a healthy tree at this time. Uh, I really love this tree and it was much smaller when we moved into the home five years ago. So this is a blue globe spruce. And I think if you look at the tag on them, they're not supposed to get this big either. But since I have had irrigation here and taking care of these flower beds and adding nice mulch, uh, it has grown significantly. So when I originally uh, moved in and planned this walkable space here, it was nowhere near coming over toward the fountain. It was probably at least a couple feet back. And even since I put this pole here, last year you can see how far this tree has come out so it is growing really fast and getting really large i may have to come in and selectively prune it in the coming years so i have trimmed off a little bit in the back uh, you can see here i trimmed up some of this other so i could get through this path because it was even encroaching here over the last several years but it's doing much better and it's one of my favorite little statement pieces in the front yard Definitely. So that was a good choice by the builders to put out here. I also really love the Sweet Bay Magnolia, which I found out the variety this year was Sweet Bay from people at the garden center. So in 2018, I believe it was, uh, the year after we moved into this house, we had a really bad ice storm overnight and I came out here and this tree had broken. This entire branch right here had split in half and you can still see where it had split. And I'll put some pictures on the screen. I came out that morning and was really upset because obviously this tree would have needed to come out. Um, it would have just looked really funny with its shape if everything was leaning towards that way. Uh, but I came out and actually put bolts in it. And I drilled holes, two holes through the tree. Right here you can see the notch. You can't even see the bolts anymore because uh, it was split all the way down here. And I put two bolts in there with washers and screwed it together and it lived perfectly fine and it's been doing excellently since that time. And so it's also going to need a little pruning. It's getting into the driveway a little bit here. I have pruned it up some as it was a little too thick at the bottom for my liking, but I need to just cut off a few of these limbs so they're not 
in the way of cars getting in the garage. Now we'll get to some of the trees that I've added to the landscape. So those were the only really, other than this blue spruce right here that I also mentioned behind me, those are the only trees that were here when we moved onto this property. So this is a Crimson Queen Japanese maple. And something I'm gonna tell you now is if you plant a Crimson Queen, I had issues with the first few years of it not actually being crimson. It would turn green in the summer. Uh, there's even a little bit of green here now. But my experience has been that these trees especially have darker leaves, uh, like the, the reds or the very dark greens, don't tend to exhibit that the first several years on the ground, at least in my area, at least in my experience. And so this was, so the first time this was fully red was last year, and it was planted uh, four years ago now. It's one of the first trees we added to the garden just as decoration and it's finally starting to crawl out a little bit. It will get quite wide and so as it continues to crawl out a little bit, some of this stuff will have to be moved. But I really love the statement piece out front. It's really, really beautiful. And as we back up, a tree I added in the fall of 2020 is right here. And this is Crimson Sunset. So you may be more familiar with the Crimson King. A lot of the trees or several of the trees in my garden are from a breeder known as J. Frank Schmidt. They produce some beautiful trees uh, and this is one of them. So Crimson Sunset stays a little smaller, about 25 foot wide uh, and gets uh, 30 plus foot tall. But it's a smaller maple and I wanted it in the space because I just really love red foliage and you can see the leaves here they've actually turned a little bit of green. So this tree's not quite three years old in the landscape yet, so the leaves are turning a little darker green. I think as it matures, it will keep more of that purple uh, red color. But as I mentioned, my experience has been these trees that are freshly planted. Uh, this one's on its second full year in the garden. Uh, just don't tend to exhibit necessarily the leaf characteristics that the parent is going to exhibit. But it's doing really good. We picked all of these up locally. This is I like to plant these bigger trees to the extent I can. Uh, and this one I planted myself, but we got it from Siebenthaler's locally delivered. Uh, and it has done really, really well in this space. This is the first year. It did burn a little bit last year, uh, but it put on quite a bit of growth this year and thickened up really nicely for me. So we'll head around to the back and we'll start looking at some of the things I have added to the garden since my time here. We'll cover very briefly these emerald green arborvitae, which I picked up from Costco uh, probably four years ago at this point. I really love them. They only get three to four foot wide and uh, 12 to 16 foot tall. And we replaced them here to have some nice evergreen structure against the house. They're far away from the house that they'll never touch, hopefully. Um, and I just really love the way they look and providing interest over winter. And I've not had any issues with them splitting with heavy snow loads or anything. We haven't had a huge issue with lots of snow uh, since we moved into this house. I've been a couple years here and there, but they've done really well for me and I've not had any of those issues. I know some people do if they don't keep them trimmed up to one liter. I'm gonna talk briefly about the green giant arborvitae that I have here. I planted these as well four years ago. Uh, and they're forming a really nice dense hedge at this point. I spaced them five foot apart, which one of the first videos I uploaded onto YouTube was a video all about how I did these trees. So if you wanna go back and look and get some more details about how those were planted, you can. Uh, at five foot across at the time that I planted them, it said they may get 10 foot wide. And so the fence will space kind of so they would eventually brush up against them. I'm hoping they don't get any larger to, than that. To the extent they do, I may have to keep them trimmed a little bit at the bottom. But they have done really well and I didn't lose a single one of them. I had some issues with this one a couple years ago. As you can see, it's much smaller. Uh, but I dug around at it and found the roots were not going into the ground great. And so I kind of pulled that up and replanted it and it has put on lots of growth and survived really well since that time. So this was intended to be a, a noise barrier from the road and also a wind break because we get lots of uh, high winds this way towards into the garden. So that was just intended to be a little noise and wind break and it's doing pretty well so far. This is a tree I picked up last year. It's a lavender twist redbud. I really love the redbuds. I have several of them. 
uh, and there's nothing a whole lot special about it. It is green, but it does have this twisty uh, falling habit, and then it produces the pink buds in spring, just like any other red bud does. I added this tree this year. This is a blue arrow juniper. Uh, it stays really skinny. Proven Winters actually has a new one out called Aqua Vita that actually stays even skinnier than this one will get, uh, but it's not going to be available anytime soon in our area of any substantial size. And this one has actually put on quite a bit of growth uh, since I picked it up earlier this year from the garden center. And so I'm really excited about the blue interest that it will give here as a backdrop to the screen giants. Now we'll talk briefly about two of the oldest trees in my garden, the first two that I placed in the garden. Uh, and the first one is this autumn blaze maple. And so I really love this tree. We went to the garden center uh, and got some recommendations on where, what we should pick. We wanted kind of a fast growing tree. Um, and this was one that has really, really amazing fall color. Now, looking back on it, would I pick this tree again? Absolutely not. So it's doing a little better this year. This is actually the second tree. Uh, it's one of the biggest we could purchase at the time. And when it was delivered, it ended up having scale, which if you know anything about scale, it's not a good sign. It's most likely the tree is probably gonna die. It's kind of hard to treat uh, when it was planted in the fall, which is the time I prefer to plant trees, at least bigger ones, so they can root in over winter. When it leafed out in the spring, several of the, le several of the limbs didn't leaf out at all. And we took a cutting of the branch back to the garden center where we got it from, and they determined, yes, it had scale, and they were going to replace it since it uh, had scale when it arrived to my house. But this new one that we've got has also had an issue since we've got it, and it's got maple bladder gall. Uh, it is not a condition that is going to kill the tree. It's more cosmetic, but it's really, really unfortunate looking. Uh, I think it might need something a little more uh, strong maybe to help prevent that insect damage. And so we'll see what we can do in the future, but because it's got these ugly leaves on them and it really is just a cosmetic issue i'm not sure that i would recommend it either i know laura from garden answer planted a whole hedge of these a row of these along both sides of her driveway i haven't heard her mention that issue with her, hers but at least here um, it has had severe maple bladder gall and let me show you one of the worst um, offending leaves here so this is kind of what they look like it's really, really bad. And so the upper ones seem to be the worst. The lower branches don't seem to have many of it, but it's just kind of looks sickly. And so it's not something that I particularly love and to the extent I could replace it or would replace it, I would, but I'm not at this point. It's possible that it may grow out of that as it gets more established. This is its third growing season. Uh, we lost a year because we had to replace it the initial season. So. Uh, this is the third year, and it's starting to actually put on quite a bit of growth. On the third year, they leap, they say, and that is definitely true. Now, something that leaps every year, you put it in the ground, is this willow here. This is Prairie Cascade. Now, I also really love this. I also always wanted a willow um, in my garden. Willows are not something that everyone loves. They can be really damaging to um, water pipes and things like that. You don't want to plant them close to your house because they can damage foundations. So this one is pretty far away from my house. Uh, the only issue I've had with this one is it has got a leaf blight last year that completely defoliated the tree. I think I mentioned in some videos last year that it didn't appear to be weeping and that was because all the leaves had fallen off the tree. Now, because we've had such dry conditions, uh, it started with some leaf blight earlier this season with all the rain we had. And then when we were dry for the past couple weeks, it kind of uh, stopped. So I'm hoping it will be good for the rest of the season. If not, I have purchased some fungicide that I'm prepared to spray on it if it starts getting any worse. But you can see here kind of what it does so would I purchase this one again? Probably not, but I'm glad I have a willow in the garden. I really like the movement that it brings to the garden. Uh, and if I need to spray it, you know, once a year to control leaf blight, that's something I'm kind of willing to do to have that structure in the garden. So 
Prairie Cascade, it also said it was not gonna get as big as I'm afraid it's gonna get on the tag when I purchased it. So going along with my last video about can you trust the plant tags, um, I'm hoping in our area, since it was sold locally, it had a tag that represent, represented the width and height that it would get here. Because online it says it will get much larger, up to twice the size that was listed on the tag when I picked it out at the garden center. So otherwise, it's a really nice structure. And this one was brought home, just so you know how fast willows grow, in my SUV four years ago as a little whip. And it has probably doubled in size in just the past year. Um, but I really love it. I have had to do some pruning on it to keep it pruned up away from these flower beds and so it's not drooping. Uh, they can be messy trees. They tend to drop uh, limbs when we have storms and stuff. I haven't seen a lot of that recently. I think as they get older, they may have a bigger problem with that. But I still just really love it. And I would have one, regardless of whether it was this variety or not, in my garden, always probably. Now this tree is a rising sun red bud, and I got this one last year as well, picked it up, um, and I'm really loving it. It's one of my favorite trees in the garden. Uh, since it's only its second year, it wasn't planted until later summer. Um, so since it's only its second year, it's still kind of getting some brown spots on it because um, it's been so hot and dry. It is on drip, but I just really love how the leaves come out, this orange color and then they fade to a pale yellow. You can see here this brighter orange, yellow, and then they go into the green. And it's always putting on new growth throughout the season, so it's always got these different colors on the branches, which is really nice. Now, one of the newest trees on my garden is this uh, Kindred Spirit Oak. And so I picked it out last year, and it is one of my favorite additions to the garden. And so one thing that I wanted last year was kind of a, not necessarily a screen, but some structure along the fence here. And I went to doing a lot of research online and I found that there's very few trees that can do this for you uh, on the market. One of them is a sweet gum called Slender Silhouette and I will never have a sweet gum in my property most likely. Uh, they produce those little spiky balls that are just awful on your feet. And even though the Slender, um, the slender Silhouette Sweet Gum doesn't have a big like branch structure so they're only going to fall you know kind of directly under it uh, they get you know three to four foot wide i still is not interested in dealing with those in the garden so instead this kindred spirit is a fairly newer species of oak and it has a similar habit it only gets three to four foot wide and you know pretty tall but it still produces acorns so i could use those in decorations to the extent i wanted to uh, the thing I have had issues with them so far is they are just really flimsy, which I think is to be expected from a tree this small and of this stature. And so I did remove all the stakes earlier this year, and my preference is obviously not to stake trees at all, but we were having some really high winds in the spring, and they were bending over even when they got wet, uh, almost to 90 degrees, some of these. So they were really flimsy, but I did not want to risk any of these breaking because the garden center didn't have many of them last year when I picked them out and they were really hard to find locally. And so that's one thing when you're buying a bunch of trees uh, to create a hedge or something of that sort, specifically if it's a rare tree that's hard to find, you wanna take very good care of those because if you lose one that's right in the middle, you may not be able to replace it with anything of a similar size. And so Kindred Spirit, I actually have a picture of these planted at a local garden center. I will show on the screen. Uh, I just really love the leaves. They're just really glossy uh, green leaves and just a really nice habit here. And so eventually I planted them, um, I believe these are about five foot apart as well. And so they will probably just barely touch. Oaks grow fairly slow. So. Uh, these are just intended to provide structure right now. Uh, that's the primary purpose of planting them. So it was a skinny tree that wouldn't get on my neighbor's property, uh, but also would provide lots of interest being so skinny, both in the summer and the winter, because they're a really interesting uh, structure, even though they're deciduous, because it's just so much upright in the winter that I just really enjoyed them this past winter as well, even though they were really tiny. So the last ones we'll check out are the Coosa Dogwood 
which you saw me plant or you uh, watched me pick out earlier this year from grandma's gardens uh, and i am really loving the structure in this area it will get smaller than typical um, is what the garden center said because of our high alkaline soil i did have some issues and this can happen when you just bring trees home the first year uh, of some of the bottom branches not leafing out i am not going to cut these off prematurely yet uh, it could have been stressed a little bit just from its transition and to the extent those branches don't leaf out next year i will remove them but i don't want to go trimming on something too soon when it could have just not leafed out because it was under a little bit of stress but so far it's doing really well in this location it'll beef up a little more in the coming years and provide a little shade to the house as i've mentioned this is uh, western facing so our house gets a ton of sun so it'll provide a little bit of reprieve here to the windows uh, in our sunroom and also just some nice uh, shade to the pergola and the patio potentially and some privacy this way so i think it's a really nice structure and as it grows up it'll kind of come out a little bit both ways always and form more like an umbrella and we can just keep it trimmed up along the house which i planted it where it shouldn't necessarily get that close to the house but it may require some pruning in the future if you're a gardener planting stuff that requires a little bit of pruning just to have something beautiful it's not necessarily such a big deal all the time i have a few other japanese maples that i planted last year um, that i'm not necessarily going to go over in huge detail in this video um, because they're newer to the garden so this one is summer gold which i've showed in several videos and it did start burning a little bit with this heat we had and the lack of rain but it's supposed to be able to take you know full sun um, and we'll see how that does because you know we have the shade of evergreens here that will eventually grow up and provide more protection from the evening harsh harsh evening light and i think that will provide a lot of reprieve for the garden uh, as the years progress but the last tree i really want to talk about is the snowbell that i picked up earlier this year uh, this is one called evening light snowbell so as this tree has leafed out and it's kind of taken on its color for the year this is one of those instances where i'm thinking that maybe the color of the tree now is not representative of the variety until it gets a few years old i'm going to call the garden center in the fall just to make sure i didn't receive a mix-up uh, because evening light is supposed to have darker leaves than this but just like the maples that i've seen in my own garden they don't tend to exhibit that darker leaf color until they're several years old in the garden so i think that might be what happening what is happening here but i just want to make sure i didn't get a mix up because it's not it bloomed beautifully it's actually got some fruit which is really interesting um, the birds haven't picked that off yet but the leaves aren't as dark as it shows online and so it's supposed to be a really kind of really dark green almost purple leaf color and i just want to like make sure i didn't get the wrong variety it is a beautiful little structure here but the intention when i planted it was to have something a darker foliage color uh, that doesn't just kind of get lost in all the other greens so that is really for the most part the trees that make up my garden i do have some shrubs like a limelight on standard and a nine bark on standard so you could consider those basically like tree form uh, but they're not necessarily trees so i didn't go over the latin names of these things because one it's really difficult to pronounce those things so to the extent you didn't understand what i said you can drop you know a comment below and i'll answer that but if you just google the common names uh, because these are trees they're more easier to find you know specifically what you're looking for and so that was we'll go over again briefly there were just some spruces out front i don't know the specific name the big blue one that's kind of a ball shaped was a glow blue spruce i'm pretty sure not confident you know like extremely confident that's what it is but based on other ones i've seen at garden center i think that's a globe blue spruce uh, then we have the crimson sunset out front the Crimson Queen Japanese Maple. We have the Lavender Twist Red Bud, the Blue Arrow Juniper, the Autumn Blaze Maple, the Prairie Cascade Willow, the Kindred Spirit Oaks, which are next to me. And we have the Rising Sun Red Bud out back, the Kusa Dogwood, and the Evening Light Snowbell, 
which is also called a styrax. So I did this video because I had a lot of people asking recently about some of the trees in my garden, so it can be a resource to those of you who are interested uh, in purchasing any of these trees to find some at your local garden center. I highly recommend to purchase um, specimens at your local garden center. A lot of times smaller trees are best, but I understand as someone who didn't have hardly any trees in my garden except a few ones, that sometimes purchasing a bigger specimen helps fill the, fill the space easier. So go for it to the extent you have those resources available. There is another tree that I'm wanting to add to my garden. I'm not sure what that will be yet. I am thinking, and I've talked to my neighbor about it, uh, and we'll see if I do this or not, because I don't want to impede this area so much in case we need to have work done in the backyard. They can still get through the gate. But I'm thinking about a forest pansy red bud, kind of in this area, uh, and it will grow up and provide, you know, some privacy to the backyard, but also that beautiful red foliage texture. I also think it would be really nice with these hydrangea hedge I have over here, and I'm always all about, you know, propping up this hydrangea hedge because it's a statement piece in the garden. Thank you guys for joining me, and remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care.